Okay, so now I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the tools, about profiling and debugging. I'm not going to go through all the details because those tools, you uh, learn them by using them. I'm just going to present them. Uh, so, I mean, these tools are usually there to answer th those two questions. Why and where my code crashes? When, uh, and then why my code does not perform as expected and what is expected, of course. And first of all, because I don't have it, the, the number one tool of debugging that you may know everybody is the print statement. Okay, but we're not going to cover this one because <laughs> it's the obvious one. So uh, since OpenEC translates actually to CUDA, then you have uh, you can use all the CUDA provided, the, the tools that they work with CUDA. So you can have CUDA memcheck, which checks for memory error, errors, not errors, and uh, race conditions. Uh, it's like the val grind tool for the GPUs. Uh, usually, you may use it when, for some reason, you, you get a weird error and you want to check if you have invalid reads or writes because you're uh, um, writing out of bounds and that could uh, either lead you to segmentation fault or corrupt something else and make things uh, really bad. Another is uh, the CUDA debugger. So you can debug the generated CUDA kernels. Uh, then a very nice tool for profiling it's the NVPROF plus its visual uh, version, which is the NVVP, the NVIDIA Visual Profiler, that uh, it can give you from high level information about uh, the kernels that they are spawned, the threads and uh, blocks. All these work with CUDA terminology. That's why in the beginning I tried to do this binding between OpenSC and CUDA. And <clears throat> And also, you can use it to get very, very, very detailed uh, performance analysis metrics because um, that you will get every aspect of your application. You will see it. So because, uh, because the GPUs, like the CPUs, they have some performance, uh, hardware performance counters, and they uh, measure several events like memory requests, uh, L2 misses, uh, divergent warps, Everything. You can see everything. Of course, whenever you use those tools, especially the more metrics you want to, to collect, the more slowly your kernel goes. It's not about performances. It runs several, several times your um, kernel and collects different statistics. So then it can give you also um, suggestions, like this is the kernel you have a problem and it appears that uh, your memory access are not correct. So try to do that, so it's really helpful. Then there are other CUDA word tools like the, that we have also installed here, the Alinea DDD debugger. And this is your main tool if you want to debug MPI applications. Uh, it's a GUI and supports MPI, CUDA, OpenMP, uh, and also supports memory checking. So you can uh, uh, use that as well. Then, of course, very useful are the compiler-related diagnostics. So first you have uh, the code generation diagnostics, which is when you compile your code and the compiler will say, okay, I could vectorize this, I could um, uh, parallelize this loop uh, using uh, gang and vector parallelism, or I could not, I could not um, uh, parallelize this loop, I'm just using gang, uh, uh, I don't know, worker single vector single mode here because uh, due to uh, loop dependencies. So <clears throat> you can see, that you, you should look at those messages to see first of all that do the directives that I have put actually translate to uh, the desired parallel parallelization that I wanted to. Then you can use, there is also the PGI debugger, uh, which like, like CDB, but um, works well with PGI compiled programs. Then we have the profiler. These are the the PGI profiler is is for those that you might 
know is the B, the Gprof is something like that. You get a, a list of the functions and which kernels take the most. It's not as detailed as NVProf, but it's also more lightweight. And then for Cray, um, you may use also the CrayPad profiler, uh, which also provides um, uh, some information like PGProf. And also for the Cray compiler, again, you can use the diagnostics and uh, you can get also very nice output on how each loop is parallelized, parallelized like vector worker or everything. In a, and you see it very nicely in association with the source code. So here is um, here I have inserted uh, a, uh, a bound problem. I mean a buffer overflow in uh, one of our uh, examples. Uh, it's the second example we're going to see today with the third one. So here you get, for example. This is the number of the, the name of the kernel as it was generated by the compiler. Uh, blur twice GPU no copies is uh, the function name I have in the code. You will see it. 84 is the line, and you see that thread 6600 uh, in block. This is the number of the block. The gang uh, has generated an invalid global read of size 8, and then you get the stack trace. And you see how it translates everything actually. You see that the actual executable is translates to the to the library, the OpenAC runtime, several stuff. And then finally, you get into CUDA that lens, launches the kernel. Uh, similar here, uh, I'm the same problem. I am uh, trying to debug it with uh, the CUDA GDB. Remember to pass those two flags if you're using the PGI compiler, the minus G to get the uh, information, the symbol information, so as to know uh, where to, in, in which line of your file, the, you, in order to have line information. And also this one in order to be able to debug the kernels. So actually here what I'm doing, uh, I'm going through, through the kernel and I have put here a breakpoint inside the kernel. So that's the cool thing here. Inside the kernel, then I'm going here, switching focus to CUDA kernel, grid number three, which block number, you see device zero, which SM, uh, which warp, and which thread of warp is that. And I stop here, and then you can inspect everything. So this is really, if you want to go low, low level. Okay, this is the DTT. So here I have another example. You will see that we're going to see tomorrow. I mean, as an example, that it's the diffusion kernel, which uh, works on two processes. Well, it's an MPI program. So here I'm using two processes, so process zero and process one, on two different nodes. And this is a typical um, GUI of a, of a debugger. You have the source code panel here. I've put my breakpoints and the cool thing here is, again, here is a CUDA kernel. So you see parallel loop collapse. Now I'm disclosing one of the solutions, but no problem. And um, uh, so you, you, you're here, then you examine the stack, the, the, the race, and as usual. And here is your output. <clears throat> OK, next. Next one, this is one of my favorite tools, the NVPROF plus N NVVP. Uh, it really helps for uh, performance optimizations. So here, for example, uh, the, the other cool thing with that is that it also works with MPI, the NVPROF, and then you can s s uh, show it here. So for example, here, what am I doing is I'm running this program, you will see it tomorrow, uh, with two nodes, and this is how you run it. So and we prove then you specify the output and in order to differentiate, uh, there's those two special placeholders. This corresponds to the node ID, I mean the host name, uh, and this is to the process ID. So this will generate a file called like nvprof.need00306, the node number, dot the PID. And then you can load them. Uh, we, we, I can show you uh, this during the exercises. 
uh, from the NVIDIA visual profile, the NVVP. Uh, and then you can see this is, you, you have different clusterings here. here. So you have uh, time of the code that's spent in OpenACC. Uh, this is for the runtime API, driver API. And then you have your kernels here. And there you see uh, they're sorted in, um, uh, by importance. So this is the, the kernel that takes the most of the time. And see here uh, where it comes. And then you have another kernel and, and so on. So you see also here the, the timeline and how well occupied is the, uh, is the GPU. So you have, now I couldn't, I couldn't put it in the, in the screenshot, but if you click on any of the kernel, you get here information, how it was invoked. Uh, then you can get also coupons information and stuff. Here is, I'm doing the detailed analysis, which can take quite, uh, quite some time to perform. Uh, and you, you need to pass this analysis metrics option, uh, which basically this will collect all the uh, possible information uh, about hardware events. And you will get a very detailed analysis. Uh, you can control this if you don't want everything. You just select the specific events, but you can save in the help. So here, for example, there on the left you have several um, uh, stacked here uh, panels uh, about analysis. You click on them and you get an analysis. So I just selected one of them here uh, because it was a bit relevant for this uh, uh, kernel. And uh, you see also the bandwidth usage. It's very, very, uh, not, not the textures, but device memory. So it's using 75 gigabytes. It's the low end. And if, if, um, if you look at this, the actual suggestion of the tool is that it says that your, um, your, your data is too small for the GPU. So basically, you have lots of, um, the GPU is idling because uh, you don't have enough, uh, enough work, enough uh, parallel threads to do work while they're waiting for memory. So that's usually very low values of bandwidth below 60%, they, uh, uh, they mean that you have a latency problem. That's a rule of thumb that you also in your CPU codes you, you should uh, keep in mind. Okay, so uh, moving to the compiler diagnostics. Uh, for the PGI compiler, you can do m info equals Excel to get just the accelerator specific um, uh, uh, diagnostics. You can also use MP, I think, or all to get all the diagnostics to see all the optimization the compiler does. Uh, and HMSGs for the Cray compiler to get a similar output. And then you see, for example, you have this kernel, diffusion GPU, and you see this along as the compilation goes on. Uh, so at line 17, I'm generating present, uh, accelerator can generate it, Tesla code, and then here I just have, I don't have vector, I just have collapse in the code. And you see loop gang vector, and you see that the compiler has selected 128. Generally, the compiler knows um, uh, a good starting point uh, for the target GPU and uses that. Uh, similarly here, you see generating create, generating copy out, and so on and so forth. So you see these messages and uh, then you know uh, what it has been generated. Okay, so that's it for the, the tools. And we're going to see more on the hands-on. And I'm going to now present you the first uh, hands-on uh, exercise. And then we can start also play with, with the tools. Okay, so let me just. Okay, so the first one is located here. It is a simple uh, vector. Um, 
it's a, a vector uh, vector scaling. No, yes. No, it's a, it's sorry. It's an XP product, and this is how you invoke it. Okay, and then you pass the array size, uh, which is always power of two. So don't put a very large number because it will be over the power of two. The default is 16, and yeah, just go ahead there, look for uh, the to-do, the to-dos in the code, just put the directives, and I will also ask you to don't rely on the compiler to put for you the implicit data directives. You can see it in the output that if you don't put, just omit them, then the compiler will generate them for you, but I would suggest that you also try to to put them. And then play with different sizes and we can say it together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>